Hey guys, it's Trina and this is my reading wrap up for the second quarter of the year. This is going to encompass everything that I read and listened to in the months of April, May, and June. I am covering 21 books in this wrap up so you can definitely check the description below for timestamps. Also to prevent this video from being like an hour long, I'm going to cut out some things like the representation and the content that I usually try and verbally state. I'm going to put those in text below actually. I will put those in a pinned comment so that information is still here and I think that will make it easier for me too because I can always go back and edit the text in case I realize later that I have forgotten and left something out. So here are the stats on how my reading for the past three months breaks down. In April I read four books. In May I read eight books. In June I read eight books and I DNF'd one book. I read three print books and everything else I read were audiobooks. I love audiobooks, what can I say? So I'm just gonna go in the order that I read them, and at the very end of this video, I will point out like my top three books of the past three months. I'm gonna start out though by talking about the book that I did not finish this quarter. That is Emergency Contact by Mary H. K. Choi. This was pitched as a romance via text message with a lot of the texting format in the book. The main reason I wanted to read this is because that texting format is something that kind of intrigued me but it was too little too late or too late at least. It had just barely started at the point where I quit the book. That's not exactly what I was expecting from the impression I had from the synopsis and it just wasn't working for me so I was like you know what I gotta move on to other things that I am more excited about. So that's not to say that I'll never finish this in the future or that I absolutely hated it. I just wasn't into it right now. Next is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is an African based fantasy world. The world has banished magic, the ruling family hates magic users. We're following a character who gets powers and then a princess from that royal family that hates magic who is a rebel who is trying to help restore magic to the kingdom and then her brother who hates magic who is chasing them. So I don't know, it was just this epic quest. There are pirates at one point, there's a lot of magic, there is like a hate to love romance going on, lots and lots of action scenes that were very well written. I did listen to the audiobook so they came across really impactful and exciting through the audio so I feel like that's an indication that they were well written. But this is full of so many elements of just like so many other popular YA fantasy series and I just feel like if you love fantasy this is going to probably really appeal to you. I loved this so much and the weird thing about this was I did not plan on picking it up initially but then everybody was reading it and I just like my curiosity got the best of me and I finally picked it up and this is like one of my favorite books of the year so far. I really really loved it. I'm so glad I gave it a shot. Next I read People Like Us by Dana Mella which is a YA contemporary mystery. This is set in a girls private boarding school where a girl has turned up dead and nobody knows if it was murder or suicide accident and the main character that we are following gets an email from the dead girl and it's basically like this online sky hunt like if you don't do this thing I'm going to release some secret about you that could implicate you. I did feel like some things in this book were fairly obvious. I liked it. It was good. It was intriguing but it lacked oomph so it's like not a favorite but I still really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like four stars so of course I did enjoy it. Next is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. This is a YA high fantasy world that centers around beauty. Like beauty is something that everyone wants to have. Everybody is born like just this completely pale blank canvas and they all look alike. And there are certain girls that are born every generation that are called Bells and they have the power to manipulate beauty. So they can go to this like blank canvas person and make them look however that person wants to and they're paid for it. So the people who have more money can do more elaborate looks. We're following one of the bells and she wants to go to court to become the royal bell. I do remember feeling underwhelmed. I remember reading this book and just being aggravated just about the entire time because like I felt nothing was happening and that it wasn't doing what it could do with this premise. And then now that it's been a couple months later, I do feel like looking back, 
I can see this was beautifully written. I did like the character. Like, I like it more than I thought I did initially, but I can't really tell you what it's about or put my finger on specific things about the book or like my opinions on it. Next is Zenith by Sasha Osberg and Lindsay Cummings. Sasha is a booktuber, so a lot of you guys have probably heard about this book. The reason I picked this one up is because I thought it was so cool that a booktuber, somebody who loves reading, who naturally would have an interest in writing because they love stories, was publishing a book. I don't know Sasha. I don't think we've ever interacted. I follow her on Twitter, on her channel. I followed her for quite a while. I don't think she has any idea who I am. So like neither she or I have anything to lose in my review of the book. I thought it was okay. There are some critiques that I definitely agree with. Like, oh my goodness, the main character Andy is referred to as the bloody baroness like every other line it seems like. Yes, it is repetitive. If that's something that may bug you, you may not love this. I did find myself bored for a little while because I didn't think the plot was going anywhere, but the end of the book had a shock that really got me and I was like, I see now where all of these other things were leading up to. And so I think that it was well crafted. Sure, it could be better, but I mean just about every other book could be better. So I felt like this one was a three-star book. It's fine, and I will read the sequel. Next, I been read an entire trilogy. It is The Cage Trilogy by Megan Shepard. Book one is The Cage, book two is The Hunt, and book three is The Gauntlet. These are YA science fiction books about a main character. Actually, there's several different characters whose point of views that you get, but the main character she wakes up one day on an alien planet. She's basically in captivity and it's kind of like a human zoo. And as the series goes on, you know, the characters are trying to break out of here and figure out like what happened to Earth? Why are they here? Can they get back home? And they make different alliances along the way. There is a romance throughout these three and it is something that I feel like usually it would be right up my alley, but I didn't like it in these for whatever reason. I do feel like all three of these books, like the plots of them, could have been condensed into one book and I think maybe I would have enjoyed it better. I particularly did not enjoy book two. Like the setting of it was just really unpleasant. It's about literally like a safari hunt. So you're constantly reading about animals who are hurt and I just didn't feel like a lot happened in this one. If it's an interesting premise to you, like it definitely delivers on the premise that it says it will. And I read all three of them, so obviously there's something there that had me wanting to keep figuring out where the story was going. Then I read Unbreakable by Sarah Ella, which is the third and final book in her Unblemished trilogy. This is a young adult urban fantasy series about parallel worlds where the main character lived in New York and she finds out that she's actually from another world and there's a lot of fairy tale elements in the book. It's not a direct retelling of anything. This book in particular has a world that is kind of based on Oz from The Wizard of Oz. This one also kind of deals with time travel. One thing I really loved about this book is how one of the side characters grew. Like, she just became so much more interesting to me. One thing I didn't like about this book is that there are so many points of views at this point that Eliana, the main character, kind of takes a back seat. I did think that the ending really fit this series and ended well for what it is. So I definitely think this is going to appeal to you if you love fairy tales. Then I read The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. This is another debut YA high fantasy series. This is not following the chosen one, but it's following a character who helps the chosen one. And I love that about it because the chosen one is just kind of like a side character in this book. This is following a girl who is at a boarding school. She ends up finding out like different things about her identity and the identity of other people and like this loss of magic and conquering of one kingdom. And she goes on a journey to find an artifact that will help the rightful queen return to her throne. It deals with ancestral memories and the main character like getting these glimpses through her ancestral m memories of things that used to be and that's kind of how she is useful in the plot of things and I love this book so much. There are battle scenes in this book that were just so well written. Like these are traditional like you know, medieval historical type battles that I thought were described really well. Another thing I really loved about it is this book felt like a standalone. It felt like a standalone fantasy. Like you could not read the other two books and you would have a full story. Like this was just a very well-rounded book. I just really love this book. It was like perfect type of fantasy that I could just sink into. It was a big surprise to me. I 
also was not really going to read this one, but it just happened to be available in my library, and so I checked it out, and good surprise. Next, I read Crazy Rich Asians and China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. These are books one and two of a series. I think there are three books. This is about a Chinese-American woman who is dating a man from Singapore who is a, from a very, very, very rich family and she has no idea, but he invites her to go back home with him overseas to Singapore to go to one of his best friend's wedding. And once she gets there, she meets his family and realizes like, whoa, I'm in way over my head. And the thing is, is that his family is like really prejudiced against her because she's not the right kind of Asian. She doesn't have money. She's not from a family of money. These books read a lot like just like name dropping, label dropping, designer dropping all the time. And that's something that is like just so far out of my realm. I have no idea what any of it means. And so to me, I found myself quite often getting fed up with the rich people problems, which I know that's the name of book three. Like it is self-aware. And then as annoyed as I would be, then I would just like get really sucked into some of the family drama that was going on. I don't feel like Rachel and Nick, the main characters, I don't feel like they are well-developed characters. I've also heard that this is a romance, and I don't think it's romantic at all. Like, the romance is such a small portion, so I wouldn't pick it up on that if you're looking for a romance. But if you love family drama, family sagas, I think that it would deliver on that, and that is what I enjoyed about these. Next is Tyler Johnson Was Here by Jay Coles. This is the story of a young black teenager. He and his twin brother go to a party and then the police raid it and he runs off with his friends but his brother does not return home. So he's missing and the main character is trying to find his brother. He's worried that, you know, worst case scenario, he was killed by the police. He said so he's trying to figure out what happened to him and then dealing with, you know, life without his twin and what it means for him to be him on his own. He starts finding out things that his brother was involved in and he just is really examining like how well did he really know his brother and he wants to make sure that people know that Tyler Johnson was here because it's just not getting like news coverage or anything like white people would get. And I definitely thought that this was a very powerful, very impactful story. I really, really enjoyed this one. I think that it deals with a lot of same things that The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas does and it was just as good as that. So like I definitely think that you should give this one attention if you love The Hate You Give. The Hate You Give is a wonderful book that deserves all of the attention it gets but it's not the only book about these issues and like there's room for other books to get that same attention and I definitely think this is one that deserves it. Next I read Lies You Never Told Me by Jennifer Donaldson. This is a YA contemporary mystery. This follows two different characters who both find themselves in very different types of abusive relationships and so the book is exploring how they're getting out of it and the lies that they tell um, to the partner and then to other people about these relationships. About I don't know, a third or halfway through this book, I just had this like revelation about something that was happening in the book. Like I finally noticed, wait a minute, this is a thing. Oh my goodness, I think that means this is gonna happen. And I totally called it and I was just so amazed by it because it was a thing that I wanted to happen that I've never seen done and I just think it is so clever, so genius. I love how things ended up, how things wove together in the end. I absolutely love it. This is one of my favorite mysteries that I've read in a long time. The only reason that I took a star off is because I feel like one of the characters, Sasha, was like just not really well developed. Like you really didn't know what was going on with her and in the end um, things just kind of quit and you don't really know like okay did things resolve with that character and you know I just feel like maybe there was a little bit more there. I listened to Only Human by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is the third and so far final book in the Themis Files series which is an adult science fiction series. The author's note does say that right now this is the end of the story but he may revisit this universe in another time. So this is sci-fi. The first book is about um, people all over the world have uncovered these large statues of body parts and when they all come together it forms one large statue and it has all these different abilities and powers and people are just trying to figure out what it really is. For a finale, I feel like this book answered all the things that it needed to answer, um, so that is definitely to its credit. I am someone who has adored books one and two in this series and they are phenomenal on audio. If you get a chance to listen, if you can, definitely do it. That's the way that this series 
should be experienced because the book is written as like audio transcripts so like yeah the audiobook's fantastic but as much as I've been a huge fangirl over this series this is my least favorite book in the series and I think that that is because although this book did exactly what it should do as a finale as a conclusion it wrapped everything up Sylvain Nouvelle is an author who I think appeals to me based on the unknown. He really would like draw you along and make you wonder what is really going on here and then book one and two both ended with these like big twists that would make, make you go oh my goodness how did that happen? What is going to happen next? But this book you know not having that because it wrapped everything up just lacked that little extra mind-blowing punch to me. Um, so <laughs> this book isn't bad. It's just I feel like what I love about this series were those plot twists at the ends of the first two books which obviously there's no room for that in a third book but I felt it I felt the lack of it um maybe those twists were what was really propelling me through the series then I read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black finally I feel like everybody was talking about this book earlier in the year it's YA high fantasy about a human girl and her sisters who have been taken to live in the Fae courts. Fae cannot tell lies but humans can they aren't bound by that rule so you know there are some Fae that would like to use her to their advantage because she can deceive others. This book was so hyped it was so loved everyone like just raved and raved and raved about it and I loved it but it's not a favorite. I don't know why either like I really liked it and at the end I was going like whoa this is awesome and I definitely 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 want to read the rest of this series. I really enjoyed the characters and there's also like a hate to love situation going on here which I think that is definitely part of the appeal to a lot of readers because I know that's a very popular romantic trope. Next is Not If I Save You First by Allie Carter. This is YA contemporary survival. When they were kids, the main character was best friends with the president of the United States' son. Now that it's years later, the president's son is starting to get into like trouble on social media and stuff, and so kind of as punishment, uh, the president and first lady send him off to live with the main character and her father like in the isolated wilderness. While he is there, the two of them actually get kidnapped by a Russian terrorist because they're going after the president's family and the main character knows how to survive in this icy wilderness because she's grown up there and he has no clue so basically she hates him because they aren't friends anymore they haven't been friends for years so she's really mad at him but she has to save his life I loved it because I love survival stories and I think if you do this will definitely uh, be right up your alley the only thing that was a little bit annoying to me is that the main character she's like this really girly girl which is fine but there were times when she would act super annoying girly girl to like throw people off but the way she would act although she was acting over the top and you know that it was so over the top I found it annoying. Next is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn which is an adult mystery thriller. It is about a woman who she's suffering from PTSD because she was in a car accident and because of her PTSD she has become agoraphobic. She does not leave her house and she loves to kind of like people watch out of her window and she thinks she witnesses a crime happening in the house across the street but nobody believes her. She's still recovering from this accident so she's on like really heavy pain medications and she mixes them with alcohol so you don't know if she really saw what she tells you that she saw. I thought that it was really interesting. The thing is there are two huge plot twists and I saw both of them come in from the start. Oh they were so obvious to me. I think that the writing could have been more subtle where the mystery was concerned but it was so intriguing it was such an interesting premise and I actually really liked one of those twists and how it was done I just wish that it had been more subtle because I felt like it was beating me over the head the entire time and so it lacked that impact that it was intended to have. Next is This Mortal Coil by Emily Suveda. This is a YA science fiction post-apocalyptic story. I think it's like The Walking Dead crossed with Warcross because there's a lot to do with like tech and hacking but it's also a survival story where people like eat each other and they're infected with this 
disease and like if you're too close to them you'll get infected too. We're following a main character whose father was a scientist working on developing a cure. He has died and she thinks he's left her a message on how to finish the cure. I did think that the mix of this like desolate post-apocalyptic world with the high-tech hacking science technology stuff was kind of a weird mix but that also made it really different and interesting to me like that was kind of one of the appeals to it um i really liked it i think that if you like survival stories if you like creature zombie type stories if you like hacking tech stories i think it has just a broad range of appeal then i read a mad wicked folly by sharon biggs waller this is ya historical romance it is about an art student from London. The nude model does not show up one day and she volunteers to be the model and word gets out and it's a scandal because of the times. She ends up getting involved in the women's suffragettes who are trying to get the women's right to vote and she ends up like getting arrested because of this, meeting an attractive police constable, but she's actually engaged to somebody else, this like upper class frou-frou dude because it's an arranged marriage that her family thinks, oh that'll be good for your reputation, you better settle down. She doesn't want to, she wants to draw, she wants to marry for love. Um, so you know that's kind of typical of the historical romance genre, but I still really enjoyed it. I think that the romance was done well because I listened to this one on audio, I don't normally get a lot of like the romantic feels or swooniness coming through through audio narration for me but this book it came through and I was like I thought it really dealt well with activism and it did deal very well with feminism and women supporting women however it is not intersectional it's pretty much white feminism then I read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch which is an adult sci-fi thriller Oh my gosh, you guys, it's amazing. So this is about a guy who, he's a family man, he's um, got his wife and his son, and he used to be a research scientist, but he gave up his research when his girlfriend got pregnant and they decided to settle down and raise the kid. One night, he's coming home and he gets kidnapped by this masked man who knocks him out, and when he wakes up, He's surrounded by people he doesn't know, but they know him. And they keep insisting that he did, you know, pursue his research, that he isn't married, he never had a kid. Like, that life that he remembers wasn't real, but he's actually the scientist. And so he's trying to figure out which of these lives is the real one. The premise that this book deals with is something that I think about like on a daily basis because of an old video game that I played years and years and years ago. And um, I just think it's so fascinating and it really, really explores it. It's a mind trip for sure. I don't want to say too much about it, but I love it. So that is everything that I have read in the past three months and I will just end this video by telling you what my three favorite books were. Children of Blood and Bone was the best book I read in April. The Queen's Rising was my favorite book of May. And probably, pretty obviously, since you just saw my review of Dark Matter, Dark Matter is the favorite book that I read in June. Those three books are definitely favorites of the year so far. They are way, way up there. I just ate them up, just really, really enjoyed them, and I would highly recommend all three of these and a lot of the other ones I've talked about. So that is it for this wrap up. I would love to hear what you guys have been reading lately and what some of your favorite books lately have been. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me because I did take a channel break in the month of June, um, and that was actually really good and really refreshing for me. I was able to just, you know, focus more on, you know, family things, things with my son. So. I just really appreciate that I have an audience that allows me to prioritize my family. Um, so I really appreciate that you're still here. Thank you guys for waiting longer on my wrap-ups and for watching this one. And I would love to talk to you guys in the comments. Bye!